In this week's Encore, Elementary Children's Director Christy Mott will sit down with me and talk about Kids Camp on location at Rose City. What goes behind all of this? What's the theme? What does that mean? And what's the parents' responsibility as we send the kids back home to you? Welcome to the Encore. We are on location yet again back in uh, Rose City, Michigan at New Life Camp. And so we are with Christy Mott, our elementary children's director. Christy, you're the first female to appear on this, this show. Are Is you, that it, true? Yeah, and it's true. That's are you excited crazy. about that? Nervous? Yeah, yeah, nothing to be nervous about. Hopefully there'll be more to come, but you are you are the first. And so um, kids camp, right? Yes. So all right, let's, let's just go ahead and dive right into it. The theme, we see all this stuff behind us. Right. on stage. What is the theme? What's the wording? How do you call it? Um, our theme this week is Faith Builders Brick okay. by Brick. Okay. And so we're talking about building a strong faith on Christ, okay. brick by brick or step by step, and the work that that takes. Okay. So we draw that from Colossians 2, verses okay. 6 and 7. It says, And now, just as you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, you must continue to follow Him. Let your roots grow down into Him and let your lives be built on Him. So we kind of took that build theme mm -hmm. and we used Legos to help mm -hmm. us see how we build our lives on Jesus. He's the mm -hmm. foundation the kids learned on day one. Mm -hmm. And then we talked today about continuing to follow him through reading the Bible and doing what it says. Okay, so there's, we'll go into a little bit deeper question with this later, but when you, when you think about a theme, what, what goes into the questions that you're asking? Obviously it has to connect with a, a 10 year old kid, right. but obviously it has to have like a biblical application. So. What is it like for you to go through themes, to walk through the themes, to try them out and connect with it with a Bible verse? How hard is that? Sure. Um, <laughs> it, it can be tough because you don't always open things up and go, man, that's a kid's story. Right. You know, sometimes right. it seems like some of it's a little above their heads. Yeah. So you just try and bring it to their level. Um, but you look for things that the kids are interested in. So yeah. I don't have a kid that I know that doesn't like Legos. That's, that's you can true. give it to a three-year-old. You know, my two-year-old loves Legos, mm -hmm. um, even though she can hardly get them apart once she puts them together. Mm -hmm. um, but if I put them in my fifth grade classroom at church, the boys, the girls alike, they all will sit there and build and listen quite attentively. And so okay. we use them to our advantage. And um, so we just wanted to connect something in scripture, you mm -hmm. know, that would meet the kids where they're at right. um, through what they like to do. And so building on Christ is certainly a theme that resonates with where they're at, and Legos helped us do that. That's great. How long How long ago did you have this theme in your head? Well, um, I got hired at The Rock last July, so okay. a year ago. Kids camp last year was one of my first things. Um, and right after that camp, I started brainstorming other camp themes, and so um, maybe August. Okay. Yeah, it's been that's pretty a cool. Year. That's yeah. crazy to think about. Yeah. yeah, God's very good like that. I think. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. All right. Um, I want to, you know, so uh, Brian was here, your husband Brian was here, and we did an on location with Youth Camp. I know you're a big part of that mm -hmm. as well. But um, talk a little bit about the differences between elementary camp and middle school, high school. That could be a lot of crazy stories. I don't know what you <laughs> right. want to share, but there's some fun things. Um, some positives and some negatives. It's a difference in between those two camps. Right. They're all great. Mm -hmm. They're just totally different. Um, <laughs> you know, kids camp, there's a lot more being like a mom or a dad, mm -hmm. I think, for the leaders, even the young ones, which is always stretching for them. Um, it's interesting when you have 20 first graders that you're trying to get through showers and swimsuits and yeah. having to go through that whole process. Yeah. You don't think about that stuff at youth camp. Mm -hmm. um, but I think you get a lot more instant rewards when kids run up and give you hugs or mm -hmm. when they really connect and understand who Jesus is for the first time. We get to see that light go on sometimes. That's cool. And yeah, experiencing that I think is such a reward. And when I talk to leaders about the investment they're making here, I remind them that their seeds that they're planting for when they're 15, 16, and right. they're going through those hard things that they'll face, the youth leaders will come alongside, right. they'll walk them through that, but the foundation that they lay now is really what they're going to draw on. And so we're thinking long term here, definitely. Absolutely. Um, but we love, you know, loving on the kids and they love on you back, which is kind of nice. It's wild and um, sometimes we have to chase kids down um, more than I think we do with mm -hmm. middle school and high school, but we're willing to do it. Okay. If there was one thing that you would say is easier, and I'll get to the harder part, the easier about this week than youth camp, what would that be? 
Hmm, that's a good question. You don't have to play as hard at the games to be awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a good answer. I can look pretty cool playing okay. like uh, nine square with the kids here where is at youth camp I can't really hang. Uh -huh. So that's nice. Okay. And then what about the, what, what's the hardest part of the week in comparison to the youth? Hmm. You know, you're on 24-7. Mm -hmm. We don't really walk away from kids. If you're a parent watching this, mm. we don't leave your kids alone. <laughs> and so that means that um, it's just a lot on the leader, perhaps. We try and give them a free time where their cabin is covered mm -hmm. um, while kids are sleeping or napping, um, where a leader can kind of step out and have a break because you just always have somebody there with you. And so mm -hmm. the leaders definitely give up a lot when they come for this week, uh, but it's so worth it. Okay, and I'm sure with this, you probably have some nervous parents that are going to be away from their kids for a week. So hopefully Absolutely. that's a comfort to you guys to know that like all of your leaders, they're talked to, they're trained to, they're, they're, they're trained on this. It's like, let's not leave these kids alone. Whereas those 17 year olds, you're like, whatever, get out of here, do your own thing. Right. Maybe <laughs> right. I saw them a few hours ago. <laughs> yeah, right. We don't do that with the kids. <laughs> yeah, that's a good thing. That's good to know as a parent too, from, from my vantage point. Um, <laughs> okay. What, what, would, what do you hope to accomplish? So, so much goes into that, and we'll get into details of that a little bit later. But at the end of the week, like, how do you sit here and measure, was that a success? How can I be better next year? What, what do you hope to accomplish from this whole week? Right. It's tough because I would say we're definitely thinking long term. Mm -hmm. um, this theme especially was... Um, launched from the idea that when you so I work with youth mm -hmm. a lot in the past mm -hmm. and what we see with the youth is that around age 16 uh, you start to lose a few like 10 to 15 percent every year mm -hmm. um, all the way through young adulthood and so stats say it's like 70 percent of people will walk away from the church after they're 18 mm -hmm. they might return when they have kids mm -hmm. and so I was just really praying through that and what is the disconnect how do they go from being kids in church and then middle schoolers in church and and why do they leave did they ever really believe to begin with mm -hmm. and so I was thinking about the foundation maybe that they were missing they were at church but did they ever make it their own mm -hmm. and I think that's a lesson that starts with kids when you talk to kids about um, are you a Christian? Are you a follower of Jesus? A lot of them will say, you know what? I've been a Christian my whole life mm -hmm. because I grew up in a Christian home. And that's great news mm -hmm. for them, but that's not being a follower of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so with that, um, I was just praying through making a theme that would help them understand what that really takes. And so what we saw in Colossians there was that the first step is accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord. We talked about if Jesus is your Lord, you just you don't just know about him, but you go to him because he directs your life. He's your master. Mm -hmm. And then we talked about how that faith to build it, it takes work. It doesn't happen overnight. We looked at guys in the Bible like David who fought Goliath. He didn't just wake up and go, you know what? I think I could defeat a giant. Right. He had that faith in God because he had been walking with God every step of the way. Yeah. So we were learning that brick by brick, we mm -hmm. build this strong faith. It starts now while they're young. If mm -hmm. they want to be a David, if they want to be a Peter that walks on water, then every time they read their Bible, every time they obey, every time they go to church, Every time they choose not to sin when maybe they were tempted to, they're laying these bricks, building their faith brick by brick. Yeah. And so we're hoping that that foundation of strong faith mm -hmm. carries them through that transition yeah. to adulthood yeah. where they've really made it their own. Oh, that's, that's really good stuff. A um, couple of things, thoughts for the parents. One is going to be a little bit more serious, but before we get to that question, okay. uh, you guys do a lot of things with social media and videos too, uh, but this kind of leads into the question. But maybe some parents are at home thinking, like, what, is an, what does an average day look like? And then with that social media, how can they see some more of that? What's a, what's a day, day look like? Okay, kids? so um, the kids wake up at 8 o'clock. Uh, they head to breakfast. After that, we have a morning activity, which is just to get them moving mm -hmm. active before chapel so that they don't fall asleep when they're in here. It's really <laughs> cold. I tend to hibernate when I'm uh -huh. cold, and so I just want to go to sleep. If I yawn, you're not boring. I'm just cold. All right. So <laughs> they do this morning activity. They get warmed up. They come into chapel. Mm -hmm. While they're here, it's so much fun. Um, we do a chapel game we do pump up songs they do some worship and then before the lesson or even integrated in the lesson we have a visitor that comes um, we do some skits okay just to bring the lesson down to their level okay. 
Okay. Um, after chapel, they'll do another activity and head to lunch, and then they have FOB, which yeah. is flat on back. That's your favorite time of the that. day, right? Well, I'm okay. <laughs> I spend that with my kids, oh, okay. you know, because my kids, my little kids are here. Yeah. Oh, there but you go. But the leaders, go. they appreciate FOB. That's great. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> that's, um, that's nap time. And then we do afternoon rotations, lots of water stuff. We mm -hmm. try and get them having fun with each other, building mm -hmm. those friendships and having fun with their leaders too. Mm -hmm. um, because it's crazy how, you know, dumping a five gallon bucket of water on a kid out on the Visqueen mm -hmm. then gives you a voice in their life to talk to them about Jesus. I still don't understand it, yeah. but it yeah, happens. It so we play games with them um, and we're really silly and we do dinner and all of that. We wrap up the night uh, around the fire. Okay. And during that time, um, one of the pastors you have tonight, mm -hmm. we call it Fireside. They kind of rehash the day's theme and they share a little bit about their life and how they've walked that, their testimony. It gives the kids the chance to build a relationship with a pastor uh, because you guys are going to be investing their lives right. after right. we do here. You're, you're right. carrying on that torch and so we yeah. want them to know who you are. Oh, that's really cool. So yeah. social media wise, the ones that uh, maybe don't know, how could they stay connected to their kid while they're up here? So we are primarily on Facebook and Twitter. Mm -hmm. um, you can look for Kids Rock uh, of Fenton, Fenton Kids Rock on there. And you can find us, we try and Facebook Live a little bit of the chapel so mm -hmm. that parents can get a taste of that. Mm -hmm. And then we provide some pictures and updates on Twitter and Facebook as well. Um, so they really should check those out if they want to see what's happening each day. Okay, cool. I don't know if you know this answer, but I think about it. If at the end of the week, if you could poll every single kid, what do you think the most popular answer would be if you said, what was your favorite thing all week? Chapel. Chapel. It Hands is. down. Okay. Yeah. We ask kids all the time. Okay. We ask them, what are you looking forward to today? What's your favorite thing? Okay. Um, some kids will say snack. Yeah. I think they don't get a lot of sugar at home. Okay. And I'm sorry, parents. There's a lot of sugar at camp. Yeah. But that's... we try to rein it in. <laughs> Apart from the snack, uh, chapel is definitely, I think, the most popular answer. Okay. Well, yeah. very cool. Very cool. All right. The serious question for you to the parents is, your week ends on Friday, really. Mm -hmm. uh, I know you spend a lot of time, we'll talk about preparation of that too, but what would you say to the parents as you drop them back off and say, now this is what we've tried to invest in. What is the parent's responsibility going forward? Man, that's a great question. You know, in Kids Rock, we really feel like we are partners with the parents. Mm -hmm. um, building this foundation of faith, like we want to help you do that. You know, that's more of a parental responsibility, I mm -hmm. think. And we just want to be a tool that parents can use. Yeah. And so that happens through Kids Camp. It happens through Kids Rock on Sundays and Wednesdays and Saturday night. Um, but really, it's in the hands of the parents. And so we mm -hmm. want to be here to support them as they do that. Um, I think of Deuteronomy. Uh, let me turn there. Deuteronomy 6, where um, it just talks about remembering who God is. Mm -hmm. And it says, you must commit yourselves wholeheartedly to these commands that I'm giving you today. Repeat them again and again to your children. Talk about them when you're at home, when you're on the road, when you're going to bed, when you're getting up. Tie them to your hands and wear them on your forehead as reminders. Write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. So I think for parents, the thing that I would want them to remember is, you know, we're building this foundation of faith here, but make sure that same foundation exists in your home, yeah. that they're building that for their families, mm -hmm. that they're modeling prayer, that they're modeling studying the Bible, that they're asking kids questions about where they are in their walk with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Kids know a lot more than I think sometimes we think they do. Sometimes their answers in our cabin devos blow us away. Yeah. Um, and so just getting in there and giving them a chance, you know, they might give you a silly answer, right. but you also might see a little glimpse into the work that God's doing in their heart. That's cool. And so just be talking about it. It doesn't have to be a serious sit down and have a Bible study mm -hmm. necessarily, but when you're in the car, talk about what God's doing in your life and what he's doing in theirs and um, how he's directing your day and directing their day. Show them how Jesus really is Lord of your life, how he's your master, and that will help them understand how to do it in their own life. And so if parents really model that um, and then get invested in their kids' lives, feel free then to use us as the tool that can yeah. help you take that to yeah. the next level. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm glad that you said that part too because I was kind of going to address the parents too to think uh, parental responsibility is, is massive. Sometimes uh, the parents want the church to, to raise their kid and they think, I don't know what to do. Right. Uh, but the parents have a much bigger responsibility than, than even the church does. But I would say as you kind of ended with it, 
the church is there to help the parent too. Like we yeah. have we have classes, we have groups, we have resources. You know, that's it's 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 all encompassing. It's not just about the kids. Um, and I know as a parent, for me, I know how how huge of a burden that is to raise your child to know the Lord. But we want, you know, we want our kids, I know you want your kids to, to mm -hmm. see that at home, mm -hmm. right? And to see it lived out throughout their lives. So I think it's, a, it's an awesome challenge and, and a thought for the, the parents to take away. Yeah, so, absolutely. Very cool. Um, okay, so in this week, there's, there's themes, there's, there's sets, there's chapel, there's all these leaders. So much goes into a week of camp that maybe a lot of people don't fully understand. So how would you describe that, like what all goes into it in depth behind the scenes, people's times. Talk about all that a little bit. Man. Yeah. <laughs> I don't it's know kind of never ending, I know. <laughs> I'm still learning what goes into it. Yeah. There are things that I think, I, you know, for next year will be better prepared. Um, but it does, it starts, I think the heart of it is definitely the scripture. The mm -hmm. first thing was coming down to what's the theme verse? What do the lessons look like after that? Um, then we worked backwards with skits and activities. Um, how can we bring Lego into chapel games right. and building right. into our activities for the day and things like that. Um, so you figure out a schedule. There was a team of us that met and kind of looked at what works and what doesn't work and uh, brainstormed some new ideas. And then from there, there's a lot of graphics and design and t-shirts and printing and ordering of materials. So much Amazon mm. <laughs> <laughs> for supplies. Um, there were people that helped with the skits. There's people that help with registration and getting everybody in the right cabins and thinking through allergies and snacks. Mm -hmm. um, scholarships are a huge deal. We yeah. probably have a few thousand dollars in scholarships that were needed for this camp mm -hmm. because some kids can't afford to pay to go to camp or maybe they can't do all of it. Mm -hmm. um, and then there are people that have been praying, just prayer warriors mm -hmm. for the kids that while they're here, for the leaders, um, for us, yeah. all that it takes. There's bus drivers. Um, there's people that come up and clean behind us as we make messes of the stage during our <laughs> silly skits. Right. It's not a glamorous job. Right. Um, tech is huge. We definitely couldn't do it without that. Running lights and sounds and taking video and just getting this information to the parents. Mm -hmm. um, all of it. And then a huge team of volunteers yeah. Yeah. that just lay their hearts and their sleep on the line. Their, yeah, their sleep for <laughs> their sure. Sleep. Yeah. Um, yeah. For these kids, I mean, yeah. there's so much that goes into it. Taking vacation days. Yeah, to be vacation up here days. Some of them are missing work. They've left um, perhaps kids behind. A lot of them yeah. have teenagers. Some of the teenagers are here. Mm -hmm. A lot of our volunteers are um, high school. Yeah, and so they're yeah. giving up. Even they are giving up work, time with their friends. Yeah, so okay. a lot of sacrifice. All right, you briefly mentioned some of these answers in it, but those that are not here at camp, those that are either watching the encore or they're following on Facebook, parents or people from our church back at home, how can they be a help, even right now or in the coming years? Sure, um, prayer is huge. Mm -hmm. You know, if they would be praying for us, that is a big deal. Um, scholarships are a blessing, you know, that helps us take the budget a little bit further um, when those exist. If they want to get involved and be part of what happens at camp, there mm -hmm. is a role for everyone. If mm -hmm. you drive a bus, if you're just very organized and administrative, if you are good at design and things that are artistic, um, if you like to cook and bake and create things that kids can have for snacks, all of those things can be put to use. And so maybe you're not a teacher. Or, you know, being a small group leader seems overwhelming, but I think there's a role for all of the gifts. Mm -hmm. And so they could contact us at kidsrock at hisrock.net. Okay. Uh, we would love to plug them in. Uh, but yeah, just being there and then being there when the kids get back. If you see a kid at church, even if they're not yours, ask if they went to camp. And next year before camp, ask if they're going. And if they say no, follow up with why, because yeah. a lot of times those are the conversations that help you get them there. Oh, that's cool. All right. So, and you mentioned Amazon, a lot of the stuff you, you buy so on Amazon. So much Amazon. <laughs> Maybe we want to speak to Amazon and say, you could be a part of this by helping us sponsor if anybody is a part of that. Look at all this stuff we buy from Amazon. That's cool. Right. They, they can help us out right. too. So, and I'm even the community, joking. well, I <laughs> right. Even the community of Fenton was huge. There's yeah. several things that were donated to us by businesses That's great. in Fenton. That's yeah. awesome. We, yeah. um, we didn't even ask for it. I feel like God just provided it. He was working before we even knew it. Okay. And yeah, so like these Lego blocks and things like that. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. Okay, final question then is um, some stories about some kids. I know sometimes you hear stories or whether some of us grew up in a camp or not, you hear a lot of younger kids talk about, um, or older people when they were 
young accepting Christ right. at camp, making decisions uh, for the Lord, being committed to a church. Tell us some of the stories from your one year in of, of yeah. maybe what you've been able to see that kind of stick out to you. Okay. Um, I feel like God's already working. You know, it's only Wednesday, mm -hmm. Wednesday morning, afternoon, um, but he's already been at work in these kids' hearts. Mm -hmm. There was um, for sure a girl last night that prayed to receive the Lord That's after awesome. hearing um, Wes at the fire. Actually, yeah. Pastor Wes gave his testimony and uh, she just thought through some things and realized that Jesus wasn't Lord of her life. There was another conversation that was had with the leader where a kid just really wanted to make sure that Jesus was their Lord. Mm. They thought they had made that step. They just wanted to sure it up. Like, what does that really look like? Um, we've had a few kids that said, you know what? I got baptized, but I don't think mm. I really knew what I was doing at that time. And so they um, made a decision of faith here this week. And so they were able to work through, you know, this is what I thought it was, and here's what it really is. Mm -hmm. And so now they're ready to walk it. Um, What's really cool to me is last night, every cabin had a chance to give their testimony. Mm. That helped us as leaders know where is everyone at in mm -hmm. their walk with the Lord, you know? Mm -hmm. Give them a chance just to share uh, what God has done in their lives. If they've met Christ, when was that? Who were they before and who are they now? Mm -hmm. And one of the kids was just in tears when her cabin was finished. And her leader was a little concerned, you know, and was like, is there anything you wanna share? What's on your heart? Mm -hmm. What's God doing? And she's like, no. I'm just really touched by all the stories. Mm -hmm. It was incredible for her to see what God had done in the lives of others. She recently accepted Christ and got baptized at Lake Day. Wow. And so for her, this is all new to see how right. real God is. Right. And she saw that in her friends. And it was so moving to her that yeah. she was in tears by the end of it because we serve a big God. Yeah. And so I think even kids are capable of realizing that. Yeah, for sure. And I know you talked a minute ago about what you hope to accomplish, but those are the stories that make this whole thing worth it, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. At the end of the day, you're like, I would lose sleep for all a week, over again. all over again for <laughs> yes, that. Absolutely. Very cool. Awesome. Well, thanks for being our first female thanks on the show. Thanks for the honor. Yeah, I appreciate we are. It. We are glad to have you. Hopefully, we'll have more of these, and uh, we'll look forward to our next show on the Encore. We'll have Pastor West back in his sermon series, and we'll see you guys soon. Back from um, Rose City.